So let's start with an 18-year-old female who comes in after a suspected suicide attempt, and she has unidentified pills in her pocket. She's obtunded, blood pressure is 101 over 64, heart rate 112, respiratory rate 30, temperature 101.8, and she has a serum bicarb of 15, creatinine of 0.8, glucose 81, arterial pH is 7.35, PCO2 is 26. And the question is, which of the following is most likely to be helpful in this patient? Is it a forced alkaline diuresis, IV ethanol, insulin drip, glucagon, or potassium citrate? Okay, 100%. Of course, we don't know what the denominator is. Could be one person answered. <laughs> but whoever it was, you can get a gold star. So this is a patient, let's see if I have it work, yeah, who has a primary metabolic acidosis, a primary respiratory alkalosis, uh, and actually, if you calculate the delta-delta, uh, actually also has a metabolic alkalosis, presumably from vomiting. Uh, she's febrile, tachycardic, tachypneic, and had a drug overdose, or probable drug overdose. So you'd certainly want to suspect salicylate poisoning, uh, in which case um, forced alkaline diuresis would be appropriate. So next, the 29-year-old female who's found unconscious and brought into the ER, and her blood pressure is 105 over 67. She is comatose and has an alcoholic fetus. Sodium 129, K3.4, bicarb of 11, creatinine of 1.6, glucose 72, lactate of 1, CK20, serum osmolality 300, pH is 7.22, PCO2 is 24. Serum levels of ethanol, ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, salicylate, or negative. I'll give you a second to look at that before I zip through to the next uh, slide, because I know that's hard to take all of that in. Okay. Most appropriate first step is the alkaline diuresis, dopamine, fomepazole, thiamine, or hemodialysis. So challenge your ability to do math really quickly or make an educated guess, which you did, and it's for Meprazole. I agree. So this patient has a pure metabolic acidosis, a pure anion gamma acidosis, and most importantly, uh, this patient has an osmolar gap, right? Because the calculated osmolality is 266 and the actual osmolality is 300. And you could pretty much have guessed that because the measured serum osmolality was high and the patient's serum glucose and urea were pretty normal. Um, so this is quite a high osmolar gap with an anion gap acidosis. Uh, in the absence of ethanol, you're thinking primarily about ethylene glycol and methanol, both of which need to be treated with either an ethanol drip or fomepazole. A 16-year-old male has a witness grand mal seizure and is brought into the ER. He's postictal and has vomitus on his shirt. Blood pressure is 120 over 83. Um, and his bicarb is 14. Creatinine is 1.1, glucose 75, CK35, serum osmolality is 289. Serum and urine tox screen are negative. Urine ketones are negative. Arterial pH is 7.3 and arterial PCO2 is 33. The most appropriate first step in the management of this patient is alkaline diuresis, ethanol, fomepazole, hemodialysis, or none of the above. Okay, so most of you recognize that patients who are post-ictal uh, often have a sometimes quite severe but transient lactic acidosis. So all of the workup is essentially negative in this case. Uh, so it's probably just the lactic acidosis which resolves rapidly within a matter of minutes to an hour or so. 
Uh, and so the treatment for this is no treatment, is just to uh, let it resolve. Uh, if you want to know for sure, you can definitely measure the lactic acid level uh, and uh, show that it's elevated, at least transiently. Okay. A 48-year-old male in the ICU is intubated for respiratory failure due to severe pneumonia and is paralyzed with vecuronium and sedated with lorazepam. A renal consult is called because of the lab finding of metabolic acidosis. And this patient has a serum bicarb of 16 with sodium 143 and a chloride of 109. Uh, has a lactate of 8, serum osmolality of 312, pH of 7.4, and a PCO2 of 24. What's the next step? Is that dopamine, dobutamine, CT scan of the abdomen, stop the vacuronium, or stop the lorazepam? Okay, good, 96%. There's always someone that deliberately tries to answer something else. <laughs> You're just trying to have fun with me, aren't you? So this is an anion gap acidosis. There's also a respiratory alkalosis. Uh, you have to talk uh, to the pulmonologist about the vent settings here. Um, but there's also an osmolar gap, and the differential is alcoholic ketoacidosis, ethylene glycol, methanol, or propylene glycol. And in this case, with the Ativan drip, propylene glycol seems likely. Okay? So discontinuing that, or at least lowering the dose, would be appropriate. A 78-year-old female has been in the ICU for two weeks because of cholecystitis, gram-negative sepsis, hypotension, and ARDS. She's on mechanical ventilation. Uh, and a renal consult is called because of a persistently low serum bicarbonate. Her meds include imipenem, acetaminophen, dopamine, and noradrenaline. Um, so her bicarb is 18, sodium-134, chloride of 99, and uh, creatinine of 1.4, lactate is 1.6, pH is 727, PCO2 of 41 which of the following are appropriate in the management of this patient's acid-base disturbance. CT to rule out ischemic bowel, discontinuous acetaminophen, increased minute ventilation, ANC or BNC. Okay. Uh, so you are divided between B and E, uh, both of which are right, uh, but E is probably a, a little more right, technically. Uh, so this is a patient that has an anion gap acidosis. Um, if you look at the lactate, remember, these are reported millimoles per liter. So the lactate of 1.6 millimoles per liter could only contribute 1.6 to the anion gap. So this is not a lactic acidosis. Okay, um, uh, so there's no real need to go looking for ischemic bowel. However, she is a septic patient who's on acetaminophen. So one possibility is that she has uh, five oxoprolinuria, uh, also known as pyroglutamic acidemia, uh, and acetaminophen seems to contribute to that, as well as sepsis and being critically ill and having multi-organ failure uh, and being female, and so. Uh, you would stop the acetaminophen, uh, and she might need an adjustment in her vent settings, uh, which is why that's included in there. So E is probably a slightly better answer than B. Uh, 